Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at a profit, revenue, and cost practice problem. With that said, let's get into it. So in front of us, we've got a problem, and it says that Thomas bought a case of Blue Jays jerseys for $4,500, and he kept two jerseys for himself, and he sold the rest of them for $5,600, making a profit of $100 on each jersey. Now the question I'm being asked is how many Blue Jays jerseys were in the case that Thomas bought? Let's start by defining our variable. In this case, we're going to let j represent the number of jerseys that were in that case. And now I need to make an equation that only has one variable, j, in it. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the information given to calculate the revenue, the cost, and the profit. Now all of these calculations are going to be per jersey. So it's going to be the revenue per jersey, the cost per jersey, and the profit per jersey. So I'm going to color code these so it's easier to follow as we go. And I'm going to start by looking at the revenue per jersey. I know that Thomas makes $5,600 and so the revenue would be 5,600 over J minus 2. And you might be wondering where does the minus 2 come from? Well remember he kept two jerseys for himself. So that $5,600 that he made excludes the two jerseys that he kept for himself because obviously he didn't sell them to himself. Now what about the cost? Well we know the cost was 4,500 for the case of jerseys and so the cost per jersey would just be simplified to 4,500 over J. And then finally, the profit per jersey is actually straight up given in the question as $100 per jersey. Now, we know that the relationship between revenue cost and profit looks like this. Revenue minus cost equals profit. Now that I have an equation for each of these, I can just substitute them in. So 5,600 divided by J minus 2 minus 4,500 over J is equal to 100. Now I have some pesky fractions, so I need to get rid of them, and I'm going to do so by multiplying everything by a common denominator. And in this case, my common denominator would be J times J minus two, because it will go into all of the denominators and I can cancel it out, so let's do that. I'm gonna keep the color coding for this next line just so you can kind of see where everything goes. So once again, I'm going to multiply everything by J and J minus two. And this is all to just cancel out those fractions. Simplify things a little bit. So the first line will look like j times j minus 2 times 5,600 divided by j minus 2 minus the same thing with 4,500 over j. And then finally, I have to multiply all three terms. So that last term is j times j minus 2 times 100. But now what I'm able to do is actually scratch out the denominators. So you'll see that in this first fraction, the j minus 2s cancel. I'm left with just one on the bottom. And in the second fraction, the j's cancel and I'm left with one on the bottom. So I can simplify to this next line, j times 5,600 minus j minus two times 4,500 equals j times j minus two times 100. And I'm gonna simplify all of this because it's quite the mouthful and it's gonna look like this. I'm gonna simplify one more time just to collect all of my like terms. So I have 5,600j minus 4,500j plus 9,000 equals 100 j squared minus 200 j and I'm going to collect all of my like terms and set them equal to zero because as you can see this is a quadratic that I'm trying to solve and you solve a quadratic by finding the zeros. Rearranged it looks like this 100 j squared minus 1300 j minus 9000 equals zero. Now you can see I can actually factor out a 100 from each of the terms so I'm going to divide each term by 100 to pull it out front of the brackets that's going to give me 100 and then in brackets everything with just 100 factored out. So j squared minus 13j minus 90 is equal to zero. Now the stuff inside the brackets looks a lot like the standard form of a quadratic function, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember that if I wanna factor this to get it into factored form and easily find the zeros, I just need two numbers that add up to b and two numbers that multiply to c. And in this case, that's two numbers that add up to negative 13 and they multiply to negative 90. Well, after a little bit of trial and error, you'll find that those numbers are actually negative 18 and positive five. So I can factor the quadratic to look like 100 times j minus 18 times j plus five equals zero. Now I'm almost finished. The final solution is gonna be what j values will make this equation equal zero. So I need to find the j value that makes this bracket equal zero and then the j value that makes this bracket equal zero. And if I do that, it's simply j is equal to either 18 or negative five. Now, 
Negative five would be what we call an inadmissible answer because mathematically it's possible, but for the nature of this question, we know that it's not possible that the case contained negative five jerseys. So we would say it's inadmissible and therefore there were 18 Blue Jays jerseys in the case that Thomas bought. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.